I'm Lorraine Johnson and we're here to relaunch the new Shetlander magazine. We're delighted to say it is a complete new look in a new A4 size. It'll appear three times a year now, March, July and November, and it's on sale now. The new Shetlander was founded in 1947. All through its life, it's driven to feature quality writing of all kinds. A mixture of fiction, non-fiction, poetry, history and comment. Some of the magazine committee are here with me to offer you a pretty sample for the new, new Shetlander. The Vore issue, number 294. We'll start with an extract for your story by upcoming writer Hannah Nicholson. Mackerel on the doorstep. Mom, she shouted back inside. Mom, come and see this. What is it, Freya? Sarah called back, peering down the stairs. Mom, Freya said again. Somebody's left some fish on our doorstep. Fish? Sarah came downstairs and went to the doorway. Sure enough, Freya was standing there holding a small bundle of mackerel which had been bound together with twine and wrapped in cheesecloth. Freya handed them to Sarah and she examined them. They appeared to be fresh, but she couldn't think who might have left them there or why they'd been presented in the way they had. And Hannah Nicholson's mystery will be solved. To our other writers whose stories in this issue include Jim Mainland and Lily Bell Wood. The magazine always likes to reflect current affairs and debates its effect on the aisles. And we ain't hear something taking a look at what folk is speaking about. What more important is transport? Rabina Barton's contribution should spark discussion. Shetland's public bus network comprises mainline, feeder services and some dial-a-ride options. As the main service centre, it is possible to commute to Lerwick by bus for a 9 to 5 workday and at lunch times, six days a week from most parts of Shetland. The same is true of Scalloway, Bray and Sandwick. Most outlying rural areas have a local shopping service one or two days a week. However, services outside of commuting hours are minimal and service levels are low to non-existent in the evenings and at weekends. Filling these gaps could do much to tackle inequalities here in Shetland. How might this be done? I watched with some astonishment the variety of stores that were landed via a flip boat. Every conceivable item of food, domestic consumables and white goods. The sea was rarely still and the oil skins of the sea main were invariably running with salt spray as they stowed the goods being swung into the boat. Once she was absolutely packed, often to bursting, and with little spare freeboard, the little craft would head for the shore, unload as fast as possible, and return for the next consignment. And that's the an article by Lawrence Macduff. Now, the New Shetlander always includes Shetland dialect, prose or poems. Here's James Sinclair with his own poem, a reflection on the times we're living in. New Year Celebrations 2021 When I think back in mind, the carry on, nice to put a wreck, making for house to house, bottle in hand till good kinds win the next day. Met with a warm handshake and maybe a pretty smurrigan. Bottle passed from mouth to mouth to drink with hell. And some goodless ritual to cut old Jamaica northwards again. Mind the funds we had, gaffing till we were sore. Singing along to half minded songs, burling till we were headlight. And as the day came to life, we would stagger to the hoose. Blithe with ourselves and blithe with the world. 
so, what to make of this new year ahead? Well, just let a crack up in our own bottle. It our own short bright. And bow our own call up at the fire. Raise our glass skywards. And was our and anybody. Good health for this new year coming. Other poets in this issue include Jane Hadfield and Christine DeLuca. We also have a lovely memoir by Eve Janssen. Eve has an exhibition of Fair Isle Chairs in the Shetland Museum in New. And she shares this lovely minding of her grand uncle. Through the winter, we sat in his chair by the Rayburn and he told me stories about all the good shipwrecks. Some of them were from his own memory, and some were stories that he'd been told by his mum and dad long ago. He would tell me the ship's names and where they were going. He would tell me how the Fair Isle men saved the lives of strangers and daring rescues. And he would describe all the fine things that the Isle got from the wrecks, timber, rope, portholes, door, even flower. He would point to the dresser made from wood from the Canadia, or the beams in the roof above us, which came from the Black Watch. There were lots of good things you could get from a wreck. Even Uncle Wally's chair was made from wreck wood. He had known the chair his whole life, because it was made for the marriage of his mother and father in 1886. It was a fine example of a fair isle man's skills, made of oak with a straw back. It was a hundred years old when we sat in it together, story after story, night after night. Eve Jonsson's writing there. Baroness Carrington's drawings tell the story of working we stray, and Joe Gray's photos show the history of the family garage. And finally, sport. We fit by reporter Alexander Salotti writing in 1932 about a memorable match he was at nearly 30 years before that when local players took on the might of the British Navy. In the year 1905 the British Channel Fleet visited Lerwick, HMS Triumph being one of the ships. The football team on board held the championship shield for the entire fleet. A local team played them in the Gilbertson Park and, in my opinion, gave the most spectacular display ever seen there. The Triumph Eleven throughout the whole season did not have a single defeat recorded against them and only two teams had drawn with them. The sailors were all stalwart men, the centre forward being over six feet. The captain of the ship asked me if we could put a good team in the field. I said I thought we could give them a good game. To tell the truth, I was not at all sure about it. However, we set to work and made up a team of the best players we had. The day of the match was one of glorious sunshine. Massed bands from the ships entertained the spectators and thousands of sailors filled the park. The bright uniforms of the marines intermingled with the multicoloured dresses and sunshades of the ladies made a magnificent display. The game began and soon waxed fast and furious. The home team knew what they were up against and if they were to be beaten they would at least make it a fight to the finish. And that's for a lively article about the early days of Shetland football. There are plenty more items in number 294. It's available new, our our Shetland, and we hope you will buy it and enjoy it. We invite you to discuss it, contribute, suggest ideas for it, and sustain it. And a big thank you to the Shetland Library, especially Catherine Jaramson, for helping us to make this pretty film. Thank you.